What's up, familia? We're here with Cesar, Virginia, and we're asking everyone pretty much why are you vegan? Who would like to go first? You want to go first? Sure. Um, so I first went vegan when I was nine years old. Um, my mom was really honest with me, and that was a huge thing about truth. And um, so we were driving on the freeway, and uh, I saw a truck hauling cows. And nine-year-old me was didn't know what was going on. I loved animals, and um, and she told me that she was just straight up. She told me they're taking them to get killed so we can eat them. And um, it just clicked in me, and right there in that moment, I just started crying. And um, from then on, I just I didn't want to have anything that would that would harm animals. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. And um, so it's been like that since I was nine. Just the battle at home. You know, it's hard for a nine-year-old to uh, control the food intake and stuff. Right. But um, they've been very supportive ever since now. And, did a lot of activism, went to the first pig vigil, and, and here I am now with Animal Lives Network doing activism. That's awesome. Respect. Yeah. Nine, that's a, that's a really young age, so. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy to have, like, woken up at that, you know, because you're, you're 24 now, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, there's kids at, like, uh, that, at Cubes that, like, um, we'll have conversations with, and they seem to get it immediately. It's like, in that younger generation, that younger mind, they just understand pain is wrong. Right. There's something bad. It's like innate. It's actually, yeah. And like, I think for adults, they might have this mentality of like, oh, like they think about like our tradition, all those things that maybe a child doesn't really think about so much. So it's not a straightforward for them. Mm. Yeah, and, um, children, children, they're not conditioned yet, so. Yeah, they're not conditioned. So you know when you're born, you want to pet the puppies, play with the chickies, play with the bunnies. You don't say, hey, I'm hungry, you know? And if you do, you go to your mom, because that's where you get your source of food from, you know? From the nursing, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's so awesome to see the youth, because honestly, the youth is one of the major reasons we have to push so hard right now, because the planet's on fire. Yeah, they're not gonna have a plant to live on. I mean, you got fires in the Amazon right now, uh, burning more acreage than ever, and now Australia as well. Koala's about to go extinct, yeah. I mean, it's on the verge of extinction and it's sad that people aren't really going to get they're not going to start really considering it until maybe the koalas because people love koalas and they're so cute and cuddly you know they probably saw them at the zoo you know or whatnot but um yeah when you're born it's like it's your instinct is to love animals not eat them not to uh, burgers placed on your thing or chicken nuggets and that's why it's amazing to see uh Stories like your story, or like Jensen's Butler, who we just went to—I just went to her birthday party. She just mm -hmm. turned 13. You know, she's traveling the world, spreading yeah. the word. And at the age of six, she asked her mom, "Mom, where do we get these chicken nuggets from?" Yeah. She said, "Oh, the store. Where do they get it from? They kill their chickens. Like I don't want them." Man. And then like, right after that, mom. So the milk is like somebody comes and takes your milk from my baby sister, and she doesn't get it. She's like, "I don't want milk anymore." And now she has her whole family vegan, and you know. Uh, she just was a Marvel, she just got turned into a Marvel superhero. It's out on uh, Disney Plus, so you can check that out. I think it comes out in February. Oh, well, you know what? I don't know when it comes out, but next year. <laughs> um, but at the age of nine, that's, I wish I would have started at the age of nine. I mean, um, but it's never too late to start, you know? Right. Everybody's journey is different. Uh, but the youth, it's really, you know, the youth, you know, it goes down from, uh, it's a win, win, win. You're winning. The animals don't have to die. That's a win. You're healthier. It's a win. The planet's going to be more sustainable. That's a win. And for the future as a kid, you know, everybody, it's a win. So it's really win, win, win. And it comes down to, you know, we were just out there right now holding the banner from Animal Alliance Network, the one that Alan Dent designed for the bus bench uh, campaign with a 10K advertisement. And it basically, it breaks it down as simple as three words. I'm not food. And that's probably what these animals would be saying if they could speak. They can speak, we just don't understand them fully. But it's, I'm not food, you know. We've been at the pig vigils and you hear them squealing, like not squealing, you hear them crying, you know, for, for, for just desperation, you know, crying because they're on top of one another. It's terrible, they're scratching each other, and they're packed in there. They know that nothing good is coming. And But I've had moments when I'm 
give him one water one on one, and they're looking at him in the eye, and I say I love you because I always be vocal to him, you know, because you know, we're there to give him water, love, uh, pet them because you know they just want love, and I've said I love you, and I hear it back, I love you because the, the the sound was like a different tone than the other. It wasn't a scream. It was a different tone. It was about the same length about what I said. And then I was like, you're awesome. And then it was another similar tone, shorter though. So it sounded totally like, I love you is longer. You're awesome, shorter. And, it, and they're smart. They're intelligent beings. Uh, but to answer your question, I've been in the health industry for over a decade. And I always have people tell me, oh, check out Forks Over Knives. Check out Forks Over Knives. First thing when I got Netflix was Forks Over Knives. Documentaries are so awesome, you know? And I saw Forks Over Knives. I have a history of diabetes, heart disease in my family. I don't believe it's hereditary, I believe it's heritage. If I eat the same thing my grandparents ate, maybe both of you guys are similar, uh, you know, aunts and uncles, we're gonna have the same ailments and the same disease. If you're living the same lifestyle, you're gonna have the same problems, you know? It's kinda like, you know, if you're putting the same bad gasoline, if you have three similar cars or a different year car models, and you're putting the, the bad gasoline in, this is just a weird example, uh, they're gonna have the same problems than if you're putting the good fuel, because essentially food is fuel, you know? So the whole aspect of uh, the forks over the knives really got me, really got me thinking. And I have furry family at home, you know, I won't call them pets, uh, furry family at home. And once, so I watched forks over knives and then vegetated right after that. It's kind of like the one, two back in the day, because Forks Over Knives drops all the knowledge on you. You see people that grew up on farms, eating dairy and meat their whole lives. Mm. Totally transitioned to a, a plant-based lifestyle. Uh, you know, from the China study, a wonderful book that gives you all the knowledge about the studies of the, the, the that disease. That Colin Campbell? Yeah. Mm. And then Essence still, the open heart surgeon. And then Rip, the son, uh, you know how he got his whole fire station to go vegan, even if it was in Austin, because they're pretty chill over there. He still got his whole fire station to go vegan and then He's traveling, traveling now, you know, spreading that. And then Vegucated, which is an amazing one. Uh, the, they got three people. The, have you seen, guys seen Vegucated? They got, I, I haven't. They got the single mom, a college student, and a bachelor to volunteer to go vegan. So the lady goes to their house, says, no this, no that. Takes them to the store. It was like a bodega because it's East Coast. Shows them you could buy this and that. Takes them to their house cooks a couple meals for them, and then uh, meets their families, because usually family is the hardest thing to deal with. I'm very fortunate, you know, uh, my mom went vegan. Wow. Shout out to my mom, Peace of Lawyers. Sell ya. <laughs> vegan flag representative. Uh, <laughs> Love ya. Uh, she went vegan when I did, you know, because mm -hmm. I saw the videos, educated, it showed regular people doing it, and then it showed how to do it, and then it, they went to a sanctuary, I believe. And so with those two together, that night I was like, I'm vegan. And back then I would have said, I'm cold turkey vegan. But now, to, to, the, to where we're at, to where I'm at, it's overnight vegan. Because when, it, when you break it down, you have to go down to changing your, your whole lifestyle. You know, because right. veganism, vegan, and uh, animal activism, but just vegan on its own, it's not a diet, it's not a fad, you know, uh, like any of these other ones you see come and go. It's a lifestyle. Because it's like the, your moral beliefs and everything. So I went home, told my mom the next day, I was like, I'm vegan. She's like, I must have like broccoli vision hypnotizing her. Because she's like, I'll, I'm, I'll do it too. I'll, I'm vegan. So that's where our journey started. And uh, just haven't turned back since. And, you know, that's, it'll be seven years next year, 2020. So it's like, you know, it's pretty awesome. And then, you know, we're just out here holding the banner and... Uh, like my mom said earlier in the video, we would have been one of those people picking up right. what they call food from there. Uh, you know, you saw the people out there in line and there we probably put like a little, uh, we, people might have been having a good time or whatever, you know, excited because they're picking up their, proud to pick up their food for the family. Understandable, you know, but we kind of dropped a little knowledge on them. So it kind of took some of that shine away, but it's actually, it's like a, uh, it's like an eclipse or something, something crazy because we took the shine away, but it's going to emerge even brighter because mm -hmm. if they apply the knowledge that we gave them today just with the simple banner, I'm not food with the picture of the pig in the truck, then they'll realize that they're not food and they'll have the power of, you know, empowering themselves to be healthier, 
to not be killing animals, and to, to help save the planet for the future for the kids. So, you know, human nature, when you, something's not familiar to you, is to kind of push towards it, you know? Right. And we weren't out there with the megaphones. We could have been out there with the megaphone. I forgot it, so if I didn't forget it, we might have had it, but uh, <laughs> different techniques, different styles. I, I respect all the avenues. And uh, so we're out there just giving the knowledge. So they, if somebody's not pushing you, it's kind of hard to push back on them. So we got mm -hmm. a couple little comments like, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I was gonna say the banner. Like, uh, get alive, give them some samples. I love bacon, I love carnitas. Speaking of carnitas, go to Just Pagana. They got the <laughs> best. They're like selling out all the time. Tamales are like everywhere right now, but uh, Oh. This is a uh, cognitive dissonance, right? That's why they have the they feel the need to like say something back, right? Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna make you uncomfortable. The truth. Yeah. It's like what did I just say? But, yeah. So like if we were yelling, we probably could have got like more altercation ish, and they would have been able to push more. But since we weren't, it's kind of like we gave them the knowledge. It's the truth. It's a shock. So they're gonna try to throw a little something in the pond to ripple it. But in actuality, the, the wave is going towards them. Right. Because they're the ones that are going to have that in the back of their head. And just by being there, we may have not got anybody to say, like, you know, I'm not going to go in there and buy it, which would have been, like, amazing. But we did get some people, one conversation with the lady, and she was very, like, receptive, like, you know, awesome. I'm pretty sure they had, a, you know, what we'll call one of our dead friends, slaughtered friends in there. Uh, they'll call a ham in the car, but they're... they're they walked away with some of the, not, the thoughts of it and somebody else gave thumbs up. But bottom line is, we, just by being there for a little hour and a half, thank you to the rain that didn't come down, about seven of us with the banner, with the lights, with the vegan flags, are now gonna be at the conversation at probably at least 100 tables. Yeah. Probably at least 100 tables gonna be like, oh, those people were there. Mm. So guess what, they're talking about it. It's at their table, you know? We've made it into their home, you know? Absolutely. You know, so there, and then somebody there might be like, oh yeah, you know? And planting seeds. It's, it's planting seeds, you know? I, James Aspie was talking about, you know, you just throw seeds, throw seeds, throw seeds. They grow, you never know. Uh, one of the seeds may be some prolific person, you know, kind of like Tupac said, he might not change the world, but he'll spark the brain, the mind of the person who does. Mm -hmm. You never know who you're gonna inspire. And, but back to the, the subject of kids, kids are amazing because they're, they're innocent and they're they're just pure, you know. They're pure, so they don't have the, the conditioning, you know. Like, oh, this is what you eat, you know. You know, and that's why a lot of TV and things of that nature, influential stuff, is kind of you know, uh, it's not good, you know, because it's, it's it's subliminal programming, you know, to to an extent. But you know, you can see us out at the vigils. Animal Alliance Network Wednesday nights with the Save Movement and then. LA Animal Save. That's amazing that you were at the first LA Animal Save with Anita. Yes. You said she actually gave you a ride to oh, your yeah, car. She was, she was with a, another lady and I was talking to her in the car. She gave a lot of tips on activism, which is very special to me because I followed her a lot um, through Toronto Big Save. You so, just got active by chance, Virginia? I got active by getting involved with social media. Okay. So social media is surprisingly like the number one way to learn how to get active because I wasn't involved in any type of social media. I was like against social media and um, then I started finding those activism events and then that's how I started activism. Yeah. So you, it really gets you connected with the community and, and yeah. just being aware. Right. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely gets you connected and branches you out because... Would you guys say it's like the most powerful tool we have at the moment or one of... I would say it is, but I'll say the most powerful tool is unity and togetherness. Because you can have all of it, and you kind of see it now, there's so many different events going on, it's kind of scattered. But unity and togetherness is the number one, because you know, initially we're that strong tree, you know? Right. You could have the different roots, but you gotta have that, that strong core. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I've been a vegan longer than I've been on social media also. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any social media when I first went vegan. And then I got it and I went to a couple of festivals. And then uh, my mom went to the animal rights conference. I mean, I've always been activist at the, st at the level of 
if somebody says, oh, bacon or something, I'm going to say something back. Or right. I might be the first one to say, oh, enjoy your cholesterol mm. or whatnot, yeah. you know, <laughs> like you're eating baby pigs, you know, because it's the truth, you know, it's just, the bottom line is the truth. But as far as, you know, full on, well, I would consider like more in the street activism or social media activism, uh, probably like about a year, a little over a year. And it's just, it's really blooming right now. It's really growing. But social media definitely is because prior to that, I would just cook with my mom at home. We would go on YouTube. Uh, the vegan zombie shot to Chris the vegan zombie it made it cool and made me feel like I had like other people that you know so I, since then I've turned some friends vegan mm. so you know some of my own initial tribe they went vegan but uh, you know when you don't have any tribe when you go on social media it really branches you out I might let you know about the latest activist event vegan festival um, restaurants but uh, he made it cool and then I met him like a year later, kind of surreal, to so kind of like your story, but um, to meet the person who you were watching yeah. and to start working with them, do videos, and have conversations with them. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty amazing. So social media definitely is. You just got to make sure you don't get too caught up in it, because uh, you can it can take a lot of hours out of your day. Right. But it's definitely a good tool, you know. To you know, like for instance, today, you know, I threw that up on there on uh, two days ago. And then uh, we had a handful of people come out, you know. Without that, it would have been kind of difficult. It would have been like group chats or something, texting. But with social media, we are able to, you know, pull together some people. You know. And I love what you and Paige are doing. Oh, you you know, it's awesome, you know. The activist awareness page, you know. It's like, yeah, just uh, one spread awareness, like, like all, like everyone out here, you know. So, because... But... Like I would say to anybody, the sooner the better. You'll thank yourself later because the majority of vegans will say, I wish I went vegan sooner. Mm -hmm. The majority of activists will say, I wish I was activist sooner. Yeah. You know, And also, uh, I believe once you are vegan, once you truly are vegan, you get the full concept of everything because some people will like say, oh, I'm eating vegan now, you know, but it's really plant-based. Mm -hmm. I kind of don't. If I know them personally, I kind of won't push on them. I'll let them kind of, you know, enjoy that and kind of, you know, try to build them up more rather than knock them down. Uh, Until they make that ethical connection. That's kind of, yeah. it seems to be a, like a dietary and kind of health perspective where it needs to shift to the ethical for, feel the ethical connection yeah. is what allows longevity or that paradigm shift, the, the lifestyle change. It's like, is that, would you guys agree? Yeah, yeah the full connection, yeah. And then, but, because also you don't want to be like, if we're just in this corner, and it's like the vegan corner, right? and then like, there's other people in this restaurant that if it wasn't vegan, it's just going to stay right here, you know? So we have to like, spread out, you know, and, and when people are trying to make an effort, you don't want to like, knock them down. But on that note, what I was trying to speak of was like, some of the people, and I don't like speaking about negative, but they're like, oh, I'm no longer vegan because of this reason or that reason. Because once you're vegan, you know, it's like, vegan is to be vegan overall for the animals and everything. Vegan is not to be healthy for the most part. That's more of plant-based. Right. But you just gotta, you just gotta encourage people, you know, but it's, it kind of sucks to see people, you know, I'll call, I'll say fall off, you know, because I don't think you can really, honestly, you can't really state that you're a vegan and then stop being vegan. It's just, right. your moral compass is like going, it doesn't. It doesn't operate that way. You know? It's like you know, you know what happens to the animals. You know the terrible, all the terrible things happening around the world. To be able to say like, oh, I'm, I'm, just not, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, I need a little bit of this in my life. Or this, like the restaurants who say like the chefs would be like, I didn't have all the right tools. Like, Ooh. so now, you know. So we're talking about the animals. Like they're just uh, inventory. They're tools. You know, it's like, no, they're beings, you know, leave them alone, you know, it's, it's, it's that simple, you know. Yeah. But it's all vibrational, we can get, if you want, we can talk about that too, that's yeah. a whole other, I mean, you are what you eat, yeah. so if you're eating life, you're going to feel life, you know, if you're eating death, you're going to feel death, and it literally happens, you know, because literally people die because they're eating all the animals, you know, the carcinogenics, and it just messes them up, but if you're eating nice, you know, plants, that's so that's the same thing with all the too much processed stuff too, you know? And that's why 
you can be vegan and it's overall it could be for the animals because you could be eating all the junk food all the time and it's straight up for the animals like Oreos you know. french fries <laughs> but uh it's, it's all balance you know it's all balance yeah. absolutely um yeah it's like any last things you guys would recommend to someone that's seems like on the verge of waking up or any documentaries or oh yeah documentaries or advice or documentaries seem to work very well we do um, I feel like actually watching footage of like what happened to the slaughterhouse really puts it into per- perspective like I would honestly just say go to a vigil go to a queue because mm. I feel like that has changed like a lot of people I know just going to a vigil I think there was someone last time at Animal Life Network yeah. that was vegetarian and he's a bodybuilder or something oh yeah the bodybuilder yeah and he said from the vigil he was like I'm vegan now yeah. you know wow. so I feel like yeah, yeah. being really there and being aware really makes a huge difference because it's it really all is just the perception change and that's the hardest thing to change in someone mm. and um so yeah it's a perception of like game changers Game changers. Game changers. Yeah, game, <laughs> yeah. Changers. game changers is big right now. That's like the latest and greatest. But documentaries definitely because the majority of people have access to Netflix nowadays. And you got like a, a, I can name like a lease for this hand. You got like Forks Over Knives, What the Hell, Cowspiracy, Game Changers, you know, and then Dominion, Earthlings, you know. Yeah. So that, I think. Sending them to, to like documentaries are gonna get them excited. So I might start with like a Game Changers, uh, what the hell, and then kind of start incorporating more in there, along with if you can get if you have access to give them food. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's probably, a lot of people they worry about like what they're gonna be eating. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna be eating like nasty food. Like no, like I mean, this is like probably something you would typically think vegan. I mean, it has the chicken in it, but uh, there's. The, the, the possibilities are endless of all the different foods you can eat. You know, we have burgers, pizza, bars, you know. There's a bunch of chips over there. Oh, yeah, vegan Rob's. Shout out, vegan Rob's, chippies. <laughs> and, uh. Um, so, I mean, veganism seems doable. Like, you guys been for a year or so. But I tell people also, yeah, yeah, challenge 22, you know? Yeah. But I tell people, just try two weeks, 14 days. Because on like 14 days, I woke up and I felt more bounce in my step. I was like, I think we're ready to go, you know? And because uh, I think that's about how long it takes to get everything out of your body or whatnot. And, you know, two weeks is not that long, you know? And there's, yeah, I mean, so if I see somebody walk up and they have like, workout clothes I'm gonna hit them with that game changers you know be like check out game changers you know like step your game up if they walk up and they have babies with them I'm gonna talk about forks over knives what the hell uh, oh can't forget about this one countdown to year zero from Jane Unchained from Jane Valdez Mitchell that one's on Amazon Prime because uh, you know they're gonna be thinking about the, for the future not only to, to save the planet but to save themselves because you know if you're eating a bad diet the food is not good you know uh you're not going to be able to see your kids graduate college or have grandkids um yeah if they walk up uh what what is the other one uh like with the shirt that says like save the planet i'm gonna hit them with that environmental angle you know because that's a big topic right now i mean i've I've gone to different environmental uh marches or uh, groups and lots of these people are not vegan you know there is some vegan shout out to them but there's a lot that are not, and it just seems kind of uh, like a oxymoron, you know? Like, it's kind of be like being a feminist or environmentalist. You can't really do it to even a 90 or 75% by still eating meat, you know, by still eating animals. You know, if you're eating dairy, if you're eating uh, animals, it's not 100%, you know? Because you could be, I can go give the greatest speech in the world, you know? But if I go and get off stage and go have a steak, in a burger, it's kind of erased, you know. Yeah. Not to mention, it's not at its full potential. You know? so. It's like a, it's a holistic concept. It's you're tackling, you know, um, obviously what's happened, happening to innocent, sentient beings. What's happening to your health? What's happening to the environment? Uh, I mean, if you get metaphysical, if you believe in that, it's like what's happening energetically to consciousness. Like, 
you're either I don't know, you're either putting something in your body that comes from a vibration of like towards the spectrum of fear or the spectrum of love. So I don't know, when you're I think if you're consuming things that are slaughtered it's just it adds I don't know. Yeah, it's people, like disharmony yeah. in the body. Yes. Right? So. Yeah, I mean you break it down like you can get deeply spiritual, energetic, but bottom line is like some people might be like, Oh, it looks so filthy where they're at, you know? Yeah. But they're treated terribly, they're raised terribly, they're, you know, uh, shipped, not shipped, but they're um, driven to the slaughterhouses or whatever it may be, terribly. Everything is just terrible. And then they know they're about to die. So all that energy, you can go on, you can go on like a scientific level, some, right. you know, the, the, I forgot the chemical that gets released, it's but. Like, probably adrenaline, cortisol, like whatever. Some type of, other, yeah. So on the chemical level so that all gets put in the, the fridges and then you go take it home and you ingest it you know then you wonder why you're not feeling good and, and you're angry you know because all that energy got put into you you know it's everything's energy including words that's why we have to make sure our vocabulary is good you know because everything is energy that's why we are all everywhere forever is a statement about all of us animals plants us we are all everywhere forever, you know, because energy just keeps moving, it changes form, so why not have, like, a pure happy form, you know, uh, rather than, you know, death and misery and evil, it's, it's pure, it's pure evil, you know, pure evil. They say, like, it's, uh, energy is neither created or destroyed, it's just transferred, right, so. Well, let's, that, trans let's transfer it to some harmonistic energies, you know, but um, I tell it, like, like you were saying, like, how is the best way to get somebody to go vegan? You know, by example, and I think flavors. You know, you get good flavors, like here, we're here at Salad Box, you got vibrant food, you got the flavors, and then they can see like, hey, I can do this, because I've heard this a lot of times, oh, this is really good, like, this is vegan, I can do this, you know? Because prior to that, they didn't know what it was, you know, they, they, they had a, a stereotype or, you know, a thought about it, so. I think food is definitely one. And bottom line, you know, the animals, you just gotta try to take people back to the essence of when they're born. You know? um, and once you go vegan, I wanna kinda say you kinda step out of the line. So you start seeing more other things, you know, like there's other things, other layers to things that you kinda start seeing that because you're not like, you know, just hypnotized by things or whatnot, you know, like. But. We're in trouble, the planet's in trouble. Like, this is the worst it's ever been, and it's, it does not look good at all. It does not look good at all. It's scary, it's scary. But it's like, we're not gonna stop fighting for, for truth and justice and what's right. No, you gotta, you gotta mm -hmm. spread it and uh, just continue, you know. And, uh, the numbers are growing of people that are waking up, you know. Uh, get a lot of positive reinforcement, positive feedback, so it's definitely changing. Um, it's the golden era, so that, you know there's going to be change. And you got to think it took so many years to get to this point, but in the last two years, a lot has started to reverse. You know, so it's just like like fast change exponentially, right? It's yeah, just very fast, very quickly. Just like our technology, you know, it's, 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 it's very fast. We just have to use it in the right manner. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, I. This is what happens when you get a bunch of like a couple of vegans together. We could just talk about veganism all day and just you know just the awakening that's going on in society. But for the sake of time, like any last words, Cesar? I got two words for you. Go vegan. Or get Jimmy. active. That's four words. <laughs> get active. Be informed. Go vegan. All right. Much love, family. Peace. Thank you guys.